everybody, it's Mrs. Clemens once again for Psychology Flipped. And as always, folks, remember, keep calm, study psychology. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, so folks, we are on part three of our Altered States of Consciousness series. Um, I hope you're excited about the topic and you're not getting sleepy because that would just be crazy. Um, here's our good friend Roy that I named. No, you cannot rename him. I know you want to. You can't. You can't do it. Um, and he's going to let us know when we need to write. All right, so previously we, in part one, the thrilling conclusion, now the thrilling beginning, <laughs> we talked about the stages of sleep. In part two, we talked about the sleep disorders, the things that are scary. Now we're going to talk about dreams. And um, as you may have learned from the last uh, part, I like demotivational posters um, because I'm sick in a special way. Um, so anyway, this is dreams. Dreams are like rainbows, only idiots chase them. Oh, that's so mean. This is Clemens. Now, chase your dreams, guys. Um, just not the ones where you're going to school naked. That would be weird. All right, so dreams. What are What's our fancy schmancy definition of dreams? It's an experience um, of images, sounds, ideas, emotions, other sensations that are happening when we're sleeping, although actually you can daydream, but we'll talk about that later, um, especially during the REM stage of sleep. So you can dream in other stages of sleep, but usually happens during the REM stage. All right, some dream facts for us. Uh, dreams can happen in non-REM sleep, as I just told you. For the most part, though, they do happen during the REM stage. As our sleep cycle continues, our REM stage gets longer, thus our longest dream is our last dream. I was actually just reading something that was talking like five minutes after you uh, wake up, you know, what percentage you can remember of your dreams and then a half hour and obviously it greatly decreases the, the farther away you get from when you actually dreamt. Uh, dreams tend to not happen in a split second, even though we kind of think that they do. It's how we're remembering them. Usually there's a realistic time scale. There's a lot of ordinary situations and settings depicted in your dreams. So tonight you might actually dream that you're taking notes about dreams right here. And picture my voice. Hey guys. <laughs> um, don't do that either. That's, that's sad. Dream something happier. Um, but yeah, so it, it definitely, you know... That's part of the reason why when people say, I don't dream, it's really that you don't remember your dreams because they might not be very memorable. Uh, you can actually feel pain due to your dreams. And we were talking about this before in terms of the hormones that are released in your brain because when you're dreaming, you're convincing, your brain is actually convincing you that those things are happening. It's, it's like you're part of the movie in your brain. So if you dream that you fall, you might actually feel pain. Just like if you dream you're, you might actually, you know, you know. Um, dreams can help you learn. They've actually studied um, things saying that you might have a problem that you're trying to work through during the day. You might solve it during your dream. Um, that if you dream about stuff from school, it might help you to actually keep that stuff in your brain and, and help you to remember it longer. So dreams, they're good and good for you. Dreams can affect your mood. So yeah, absolutely. If you wake up and you had a bad dream, you might be in a bad mood that day. Absolutely. And here's where we get into our big thing. Uh, what the heck is the purpose of dreams? Because we know we dream. We do. It's a fact. We dream. Even if you think you don't dream, you dream. What is the purpose? So sometimes people, some people have said maybe it's to help us to kind of organize our brain from the day. So we're kind of picking and choosing what do we need to know, what can we forget. Um, our big thing that we're going to talk about is from, like we talked about before, the father of modern psychology, our good friend Sigmund Freud. Oh, you look so handsome with your very nicely trimmed beard. Uh, he's the guy that has made in modern times this idea of analyzing dreams just so important because remember we talked about his idea of the unconscious so he says that our dreams are expressing things that we can't bring ourselves to think about um, and so that's why we need to to analyze our dreams 
So we can know what's going on deep, deep inside. So he believes very much so in symbolism. So if you're dreaming of a watermelon, it's not really a watermelon, it means something else. And he says that the purpose of our dreams is to resolve our inner conflict, conflict or conflict, um, and show our unfulfilled wishes. So for him, we need to know these so we know what we're afraid of, we know what we really want, we know, um, you know where we really want to go in life because he says consciously we don't know we need our dreams our dreams are trying to talk to us now Carl Jung or Jung if you want to do the American pronunciation but we'll, we'll go with his native one of Jung Carl Jung said he, he's kinda of like Freud 2.0 he says yes 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 alright dreams are important but that's not the whole thing like it, Freud takes symbols and gets uh, very, very, um, everything's a symbol. Everything means something. And maybe, you know, he's always kind of stretching things. And it does kind of get a little bit sexual in nature. Whereas Carl Jung says, listen, all right, our dreams are important, but, and yeah, the symbols can help you, but in order to kind of figure out what the symbols are, you need to know about the person to know what that actually means. In some cases, a watermelon really is just a watermelon. Um, sometimes it's not. Alright, nightmares. We tend to remember our nightmares more because they're scary. It's, think about it, you know, um, when you've seen movies, the movies you remember are the movies that, you know, have something crazy happening or, you know, elicit some sort of emotion, whether it's, you know, a lot of humor or not, but, um, you know, so that's the same thing with nightmares. You remember them because they're scary. Um, a lot of times, yeah, they absolutely frighten us enough to wake us up because we're scared. Um, our emotional reaction of dread can actually influence the content of a dream. For example, if you're opening the door, you're going to create something behind that door that you're afraid of. So if you're afraid of snakes, you might open that door and snakes will be there. Now, I'm not really super afraid of snakes, so that won't be there. Maybe with me, because I'm, like, afraid of bridges, maybe it'll be a big bridge that I have to walk across. Um, you know, it's not going to be fluffy little cats, you know, that are attacking me, because that doesn't go with my sense of dread to justify my feelings. Some different causes of nightmares. Absolutely, if you're sick, if you've um, experienced some sort of mental trauma, stress, absolutely. Sometimes we just have them. And there's, there's no real cause. Now, we talked about night terrors or sleep terrors before. And um, that's that whole thing where you wake up and you have that, that feeling of fear. But it's not a dream. It's just an emotion. So you need to know the difference. A, a night terror or sleep terror, just an emotion. You don't have a whole plot to, you know, of a dream, you know, to... To go in there it's just that feeling and it happens a lot more with kids than it does with adults now you don't need to write this but just um, I thought this was kind of interesting that violent dreams are a warning sign there's actually a disorder called REM sleep behavior disorder where you might act out your dreams um, where you might be hitting or kicking or screaming um, and I've heard of people that have to be kind of tied down when they sleep so that they don't hurt anyone. And yeah, just a fun fact that people that stay up late, they tend to have more nightmares than people that go to bed on time. So I don't know if I've said this, but get to bed, man. Not right now if you're in school, don't do that. But if you're at home, go to bed. All right, and then the other, the last thing, the people that people, the thing that people ask me about all the time is lucid dreaming. Basically, trying to control your own dreams. So um, I, I took this from a live science page, so you can go down and check that out if you want to type in that link. But um, so here's what it says: It says if you're interested in lucid dreaming, you might want to take up video gaming. The link, both represent alternate realities. Um, if you're spending hours a day in a virtual reality, if nothing else, it's practice. Gamers are used to controlling their game environments, so that can translate into dreams. Her past research has shown that people who frequently play video games are more likely than non-gamers to have lucid dreams where they view themselves from outside their bodies. They're also better able to influence their dream worlds as if controlling a video game character. That level of control might also help gamers turn a blood-curdling nightmare into a carefree dream. 
This ability could help war veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So if you've ever had a dream where, you know, somebody's beating you up and then somehow you kind of, you have a different sort of consciousness where you realize, hey, this is a dream, but you're still asleep. And you say, all right, I'm going to fight back. That's lucid dreaming where you're controlling the dream. Uh, and there's a whole ton of things about this. If you want to know more about it, I would say just do a search on the internet and you'll find a ton. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this yet again, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!